This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. We are very, very glad to have that opportunity to open our hearts and to receive wisdom from heaven. Every day when you learn, you need to receive that learning like that now. It's time of receiving the Torah from Mount Sinai. That's the way you should come with that preparation. Willing to accept on ourselves the real wisdom of the Creator, the real knowledge of how to connect ourselves to Him and how to fulfill His will and how to become who that we really are. People in the world are suffering big time. Everyone, there is no person that is clean from sorrow and pain and difficulties, all kinds of uh, sorrow and, um, and destructions in people's life. And usually the main problem is that people are not understanding the real message of the Creator to them through that sorrow, through those difficulties. And they misinterpret the Creator's message and they're twisting and bending and breaking all of that amazing lesson and conversation that the Creator is having with every individual. For an example, someone tells you, hey, my friend, I see you have a great potential. Right? You heard that sentence. Now you go with that to your father. Hi, father, how are you doing? Shalom Aleichem. Someone told me today, this rich person, this businessman, he told me I have great potential. What do you think that he meant? Your father gonna tell you that you should put your mind into learning and your father gonna express his own desire to you, putting his dreams into your mind that you will become that successful person that he wants you to be. Then you're going to go ask your mother, Hello dear mother, how are you doing today? I met that rich person, he told me I have a great potential. What do you think was his intention? That you're so talented, my kid, that you should find your own way in the world. Or she's going to put your, on you her own dreams. You're going to go and speak with your friends. You don't know, he offered you a job. You should go, you should knock at his door, go today. Everyone's going to misinterpret that person's intention corresponding to his thoughts. To his assumptions, to his desires, to his fears, to his dreams, to whatever. There is only one truth, only one way to know his intention. Or that you're going to ask him. Go again and tell him, can you please tell me what you meant when you told me that I have a great potential? What, what were you talking about? And then to wait for his answer, for his respond. Or that... And that's the path that I'm choosing, that last way. That a person will have faith in himself and he will be clean from selfish will or desires. And he will come to every conversation with a clean heart. And his will will be always just to hear the truth. 
and he will not gonna want even to interpret that person's thoughts and he will just be clean to soak, to receive, to accept from him his real intention. And then when that person will speak to you in the beginning, in the first place, you will feel his intention. You will understand what his words were supposed to do in you. What was the real message and why I'm choosing that way even on the other way of going to him and asking him, okay, now he told me you have a great potential. What's better than to, okay, what do you mean? It's It, it sounds so quick and, and easy. Why to start believing myself, believing myself and thinking and accepting and breathing? Why? Because the truth is that I don't want to know what that guy thinks that is my real potential. I want to know what is really my real potential. I want to know what Hashem is telling me, not what that rich person is telling me. The truth is that I couldn't care less what that rich, wealthy person thinks that is my potential. Who cares what he thinks? I want to know what Hashem told me through that rich person. I want to know the truth about myself. So when that person will tell me, hey, you have a great potential, I want to feel inside of myself, what does it mean for me? What is my great potential? Now, if I'm telling you, hey guys, we need to serve Hashem. We all can do big things for Hashem. So one person is thinking, oh, I can dedicate my life to prayers and to learning. Another person is going to say, wow, I can become a prophet. I can be spiritual. I can find my inner place. I can find my inner quiet. A third person is going to say, wow, I can redeem the world. I can go and distribute the wisdom of Hashem. And I can, 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 can make huge changes in the world. We can bring redemption. A fourth person will come and say, hey guys, we can bring Mashiach, Mashiach. Everyone is different. And that is the truth. When I'm telling you, you need to serve Hashem, it means something else for every one of us because we're all different. And you have your way to serve Him and to find yourself. And I have my way and it's different than yours. And the third one will have a different one and are all good and all needed because your friends really need you to shine upon them and my friends, they don't need you to shine upon them. If they would need you, they would be your friends. They need me. My wife, she needs me to speak with her until the middle of the night and my children, they don't need your advice. They really don't want to hear it. They want to hear me. They need their father to sit and speak with them and everyone the Creator put him in a certain place, in a certain zone, in a certain area, that in that area he is needed and required and very, very important. And he is a very, very strong and powerful pillar that can, can bring stability to that area, can bring bounty, can be a huge channel to bring down light to that area. It depends in how you accept yourself, in how you find your true self. So, for that we must work on our self-awareness. It is so, so, so important that we will find our true selves now. Like I said before, people in this world are suffering. But the main suffering, the main sorrow that people are going with is coming because they misinterpret the truth. They don't understand reality. They're mistaken to think certain things that are not really happening in their lives, like punishments. If a person has some kind of sorrow, so immediately people think, Oh, Hashem punished me. Oh, Hashem now is re re rebuking me, punishing me, showing to me. He's rejecting me. I've been rejected. I, I can't do it. Hashem can't stand my learning. The Creator doesn't want to hear and accept my prayers. I'm not worthy. Based on what? Based on what? Show me your investigation. Really teach me how you came to those lousy conclusions, to those horrible, horrific conclusions that are 
basically, except of being Lashon Ara, bad words on the Creator, misinterpretation of His will, completely, radically, the complete opposite of His real will, it's nothing. Except of being a mistake, it's nothing. Negative thoughts are thoughts that are coming from the negative side, from the evil inclination, from the dark side, from the evil side, from the snake, from the satan. From, 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 it's a mistake. It's a power of imagination that is working on you to make you a negative person that hates himself, that doesn't appreciate himself, that can't stand his life, that hates himself now. Where is it all starting? Every person that is suffering today, he's got a certain trauma. Something started that will of sorrow. And based on that trauma, based on a certain pain in the early age of his life, of our life, we created patterns. And we're dragging those patterns into some of us for the rest of our lives. Till the end of our lives, blaming ourselves and hating ourselves and judging ourselves and criticizing ourselves and even revenging and destroying ourselves and killing ourselves and slaughtering ourselves alive. For what? For no reason. For misinterpreting reality. Something happened to you and you cannot understand that you are a victim of what that happened to you. And you start blaming yourself on your failure. But that failure in your life took place only because that you became a sacrifice, a victim of something else, of someone that hit you, someone that insulted you, someone that scared you, someone that gave you that feeling that you lost, that you don't have no hope, that you will never succeed. Something happened in your life that created that dark spot in your life. And from that moment and on, because that you misinterpret, maybe because that you didn't have the vessels, the tools, the mindset to really dissect and investigate and find the truth. Because you were a child, because you were not qualified to solve such big problems. You're born to be a child of a Holocaust survivor. You can't, you can't win. Okay, like your father was beating you. Okay, it, it, it's done. Your mother, she had a filthy mouth. It, 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 dead, you're dead. You're done, you're finished. It's, there's nothing to do. You can't win. So, the real way to win is first of all to understand that you are a victim and you're not the one to be blamed. So now immediately as a victim, you want to find that person that hurt you and to put the blame on him. So, okay, it's my father. Okay, it's my mother. Okay, it's that rabbi. It's that teacher. It's the bad friends, horrible brothers. Okay, great. Poverty, weaknesses, sicknesses. My, he, he died when I was very young. Whatever. You, you're gonna, the truth is that you cannot throw the blame on no one because that person that was violent, violence against you, he was the one that hurt you, he is also a victim. Because why you are angry about yourself today? Because you are making other people victims. Because you are hating other people, you are hurting other people. You are destroying your own children, you are hurting your wife, you are fighting, you are making horrible deals, you are losing money, you don't sit and learn. You are creating victims, you are destroying things. But now like we said, the reason that you are destroying things in the world is not because that really you are bad, just because that you have negative patterns, that you are dragging them from your childhood, and because of that, that you are a victim, now you are destroying other people. So, we're saying the way to heal it, first of all, is not to blame yourself and to understand that you're a victim. But, you're a victim of a person that is also similar to you. He's also a victim of his reality. 
his father, your grandfather, was not in a better situation than your father, maybe even worse. The sorrow and the poverty of 80 years ago was maybe even harder than the one that you experienced 40 years ago. Okay, so let's blame that grandpa. No, <laughs> he also born 40 years earlier and start suffering over there and, 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 and it's going back and back to, to, to biblical days. Relationships in the tents and exile from one land to the other and walking in the desert and talking and, and every sorrow and every pain that added to that generation went down to the next generation. And we're carrying the sorrow that started from our ancestors in the earliest generations. And it's taking us to the real beginning of Adam and Eve, of Adam and Chava. That's where it all started. That's where really it all started. In the early sin of the first man and his wife. Something happened over there. So what are we going to do? Okay, let's blame them. Okay, let's complain. Adam, what was he doing after that he ate from that forbidden fruit? Hashem asked him, why were you doing it? He said, the woman. What do you want from me? I didn't do anything. She gave me that fruit. So I was eating. And you gave me her. You gave her to me. What do you want from me? It's not my fault. And he's asking her, what were you doing? Why you gave him the fruit? So she's saying, the snake. He was tempting me. He gave me that fruit. So everyone are blaming. You know what? I'll tell you something. We gonna, and Hashem is also doing the same with us. Because the Torah, what the Torah is telling us, you were sinning, so now you're going to be punished. They ate from that forbidden fruit, and because of that sin, they've been exiled from heaven. And all the exile started, and all the sorrow, and Cain is killing his brother Hevel, and the world is falling apart. From one generation to the next, there is a flood, and millions of people are dying, and the next generation, they're trying to build a huge build. Everything is, is worse and worse, and falling and collapsing. And you know, 70 years ago, we, we experienced the Holocaust. So what else can, can be said? Except of that the truth is that we're breaking to pieces. So okay, let's go to the root. Who are we going to blame? Hashem even is blaming us. You sinned. That's why I exiled you from heaven. But I have a question. Okay, Hashem, you know what? I'm with you. I admit, when I was in that soul of the first man, I was sinning. We were all sinning. I'm not arguing. I believe in what it's written in Bereshit, in the first part of, of the Torah, Kedusha. I'm accepting it. I was sinning. But... Can I ask you, Hashem, the Creator, one small question? Why in the world did you send that damn snake with us to heaven? Can I understand that? What was your intention? Please, why? You send me and my wife from the divine world, from the endless world. We were holy souls. Everything was perfect. We were with you. And then you took that decision and it was acceptable. We liked it. We loved it. You said, okay, my children, I want to send you down. I'm going to create a world for you. It's going to be like heaven. We're going to call it heaven. You know what? It's a great idea. We're going to call it heaven. We're going to send you there. It will be heavenly. It will be perfect. Have fun. Enjoy. I'm giving you the garden. You'll have the fruits. You'll have the animals. You'll have the lakes and springs and rivers. Everything you need on me. Okay, Hashem, so what's the deal? Why you send the snake? What am I doing right now? Throwing it all on Hashem. Blaming it all on Hashem. That's not the right approach. It will never gonna bring us to the solution. Because he's blaming us, and we're blaming him, and you're blaming your father, and your father will blame his father, and his father is going to blame his mother, and it's done. It's, it won't bring us nowhere. The solution must be that we're going to start taking responsibility on our lives. 
with no connection to whatever happened with you in your childhood. So now if you're still falling and failing and there's no one to blame because it's a circle and you're losing your, 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 your counting, you can't catch, you can't go to the root, to the beginning of all of that circle, the only thing that can be done is that you're going to start forgiving yourself. That you will understand that you are a victim. And now start building yourself with no connection to what happened. Everything that happened can be fixed. If you will accept reality, if you will understand that you don't need to blame yourself on what that happened with you in your life. To do tshuva, to come back to Hashem, it's not to hate yourself on your mistakes. Because the Torah itself is teaching us many, many kind of wisdom that are very, very positive and, and forgiving and allowing and permitting and, and have patience and have mercy and it's okay and wait and relax and breathe. Many, many verses and Mishnayot and Gemarot and many, many rabbis and righteous people along the years came with amazing wisdoms and amazing methods that were opening our eyes to accept life and to breathe and to understand uh, the lesson of the great, greatness of tshuva and that as long as the candle is still lit, you can fix, and that there is no despair in the world, and that tshuva can atone and erase all your sins, and even if you sinned, you can always do tshuva, and if you regret on your sin, all of your crimes and sins are going to be erased, and many, many things are coming for us to teach us that there is a lot of hope. And Hashem is saying, I'm not looking at your, uh, at your sins. I'm not being judgmental with you. I love you. I'm, I'm, I'm erasing all of your crimes and all of your sins. And I love you. And my love is an unconditional love. We have hundreds on hundreds of verses and, and paragraphs that are written by hands of real righteous people and by the Creator Himself in the Bible that, and by, through the prophets that are telling us, listen, relax. Hashem is with you. So we as individuals, we must find that golden path. We must find our root. We must find our way to healthy life. Now my healthy life are not your healthy life. For me, healthy life can be the worst kind of life for you. Because you must have your schedules. And me, if you tell me that I have plans for tomorrow, I'm not waking up. <laughs> Everyone is different. And I understand that you need to know exactly what you need to do tomorrow or else you can't fall asleep. But me, if I know that I have a list of duties for tomorrow, I'm going to be awake all night. I can't sleep. So we're completely different and I accept you. So accept me. The way that I'm really going to accept you is when I'm really going to accept myself. As long as I'm not accepting myself, I can never accept you. Because I can see you only through my eyes. And when my eyes are blocked and sealed and impure and being judgmental and critical and negative, so I can't see you. But it's all starting because I cannot see myself. So every single one of us must work on finding himself. Now, what does it mean to find yourself? What does it mean? It's not a concept that is floating in, in space. To find yourself, it's something that is very, very practical. It's something that everyone can do. To develop self-awareness, it's just really to listen to yourself. It's really to try to understand who you are. To try to, to listen to your own prayers, for an example. If now you try to speak with Hashem, you say to yourself, okay, I'm now going to go 
and pray on my troubles, on my sorrow, on my fears, on my stress. And it's an amazing thing. And that's what you want to do. So now, you're going to go and start telling Hashem, Hashem, I'm so scared. I don't know what to do. I'm about to lose my job. They told me that they're not going to renew my contract. What am I going to do next year? Okay, great. that's your prayer. Because that's your sorrow. My prayer going to be different. His prayer going to be something else. He's going to go, Hashem, I don't know what to do. My wife, she was screaming at me. She told me. The third one, <laughs> Hashem, where is that wife that you promised me? I'm 43 and I don't know what to do with myself. No shiduchim, no offers, I'm going, I meet only crazy people. Probably I'm crazy myself, I know I'm crazy. What the Hashem, I'm crazy. People are suffering from mental sicknesses and illnesses and people are losing their minds and people are using drugs and medicines that can be even worse than drugs. and and people have many kinds of sorrows and pains and, 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 and problems. So everyone must understand that he needs to find his own way out from his own exile, from his darkness. And you don't need to be like me to go out from your darkness because my path is taking me out from my prison but our prison got different addresses, we're in different cells. You're, in, you're locked in your own cell and you need to find your way out. So for one person it will be through his thought, thoughts, and for someone else it will be through working on his habits, to make better habits, to set his schedule in a better way. And to know yourself, it's to literally just be honest with yourself about your situation, about your condition. If you're afraid of women, or if you're afraid to lose your money, or if you're afraid to, to lose, lose your control or your honor or whatever, so that's who you are and you need to work on that. And it's okay because I'm not better than you because I have my issues and they can be very embarrassing. But the only way to get rid of all of that sorrow is to express it. So if you have a very good friend, so go and talk with him. Go talk to him. But if you don't, you can talk to yourself. You can talk to the Creator. You need to understand the real highest relationship that a person can have with the Creator is to have the Creator for you as your best friend friend. That's the highest level of them all. And if you're going to blame me to be a Hasid, to be a Breslever Hasid, even worse than a Hasid, and you're going to say that it's only because that I learned that Torah from Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, I'm going to tell you that I'm sorry. But actually that Torah is based on what that's written in the Orachayim HaKadosh. That the Orachayim HaKadosh was a Moroccan Sephardi that made Aliyah from Morocco to the Holy Land of Israel and is buried in the Mountain of Olives in Harazitim in the Holy Land, Holy City of Jerusalem. And he was explaining the meaning of the verse that is telling us about a person that walks in the way, on the way, and he sees his friend animal cattle, walking, lost, and he's thinking to himself, and the Torah is obligating that person in that verse, that if he saw his friend's animal, that he should take that animal and to bring it back to his friend's house, to his friend's farm, because it's your friend's treasure, it's your friend's property, it's his animal, so have mercy on your friend, be a good friend, the verse is saying, and bring him what that he lost. Bring him his animal. And the Or Chaim HaKadosh is explaining that that verse is talking about you, any one of us, and Hashem, He is your friend. That's how the Or Chaim HaKadosh is saying that your friend is the Creator Himself, and if you walk on the way, 
One day you walk, you travel, and suddenly you see your friend's animal. Who is that animal? The Ochaim HaKadosh is saying, it's one of your brothers that is acting like an animal. That he fell from his spiritual level of being a holy righteous man, and he's just being an animal. He's cursing, and eating, and pushing, and cursing, and fighting, and arguing, and punching, and lying, and scamming. And he's a big, rough animal. And you see him, so you should understand, he is lost. But you have an obligation to your friend, because he's your friend's animal. He's the Creator's child. So you need to be a good brother. If you will see the animal of your brother, you need to be a brother to the Creator. You became partner with the Creator right now by the Orachim HaKadosh, by the wisdom of the Torah, by what that Hashem is telling us. Because the Creator, He called us His wife, He called us His children, He even called us His mother, because we are delivering Him to this world by bringing children down to this world. Because those children's soul is a godly soul. So when you bring another person to this world and it's your child you are completing the soul of the Creator that he when he created the first man he brought into that creation into the first man's body a godly soul that is part of heaven it's his own spirit it's the Creator himself that lives inside of us so when you are bringing down to this world a soul you're bringing Hashem to the world. So the Creator Himself, He called us in the Bible, His mother. Now that's crazy, right? No, it's not crazy. That's the truth. That's reality. And that is the secret that not many rabbis can tell you. You know why? Because they never found themselves, even if they are very respectable and honored and really good people. And I'm not now saying bad things on them. I'm just telling you that the fact that they have a big dark hat and a long beard doesn't necessarily mean that they have the complete wisdom. And your parents also, even that you are obligated to respect them, it doesn't make them to be real, complete, genius and righteous people that knows the Torah by heart, that understand the truth in every step of the way. No. You have your own obligation to find your path and to find your true self, and to find the messages and to understand them, the hints that the Creator is hinting you along the way. And you have a 100% obligation. And like the Mishnah is telling us, that you're coming alone to this world, al against your will. They're forcing you to come down to this world. And to go through all kinds of challenges and tests in this world. And you're going to be judged on them against your will. They're going to force you to be judged. So what can you do except of trying to do the best that you can? And to do the best that you can is, first of all, to search for the truth. Now, to search for the truth, again... It's not a high aspect in Avodat Hashem. It's not a term in Kabbalah. It's not something far. Maybe there are thousands of ways to interpret the word truth, but the word truth got a very simple meaning of being truthful, being honest, not lying, not hiding, not scamming, not betraying, just to be who that you are and not to lie. That's, that's truth now. Everyone can do that, and that is the main thing that the Creator really asks from us. That we will hold that attribute of truth, that we will be loyal to Him. And how are we going to be loyal to Him? By being truthful. So now you're going to say, but I don't know how to do that. No, you do. You do know. Just you make it too complex. You just... 
don't want to deal with the simplicity of life. How simple it is to be righteous. How simple it is to be honest. Just don't lie. If your wife is telling you you're lazy, don't argue. Think, was I lazy? If you were, say, I'm sorry. You're right. And then, car, how you say, drag yourself out of the American sofa, American comfort sofa. Bring yourself together and how do you say that in English? The garbage. <laughs> no, in Yiddish I meant, in Yiddish. Move your tuches. <laughs> Move yourself. Move your tush out of the sofa. Reality, just be truthful. Don't lie. Don't say no. I was not. Are you calling me lazy? Every day I'm working. Five till eight. Every day I'm waking up. I'm praying Shachrit. I'm going. I can't. Barely I'm finishing my obligations. I'm not doing this because of... Hey, relax. What happened? Someone pushed your buttons? Why? Because you don't want to deal with your laziness. That's your problem. You don't want to deal with certain things, so you're lying about those things because you're afraid to deal. Now, if I'm gonna admit that I'm lazy, she's gonna have a case. She's gonna always reminding me, oh, you're lazy. Yesterday you admitted that you were lazy. Here you're lazy again. What are you doing? She's gonna kill me. I don't have the power for all of those arguments. I'm gonna once and for all, and that's it. You're gonna finish those arguments. No, that's because you're not truthful. But if your intention would be really for the truth, your desire would be really to fix yourself and not to live life of comfort, just really you will feel obligated to the truth, to the Creator. You will have real Yirat Shamaim, real fear from heaven. So then you won't lie. If someone will catch you doing something wrong, you know the truth. When she tells you you're lazy, you know if you were lazy or not. Don't run away from the truth and start thinking and being too wise and start planning and protecting your... No! Be realistic. Be truthful. Say the truth. If someone asks you for charity, now you can choose if to say yes or if to say no. But the truth... The real truth, if you have money, if you're really able to give charity, that's something that only you and Hashem know. Only you know the truth if you're able to give or not. Now, you can choose if to give or not to give. It's okay. But at least don't lie to yourself. No, no, I'm sorry. No, it's not a good time. Why it's not a good time? If your best buddy would come and knock on your door, it would be the best time in the... It, it's not that really you don't have time. You're choosing to lie because you don't want to deal with reality. The reality is not that you don't want to give charity. You have another problem inside that you don't want to deal with. Like we said before, every pattern, every problem that you have right now is a result of an earlier thing, of a different reason that caused that thing to happen. Now if a poor person is knocking at your door and you open the door and you're not happy to see him because you know that he wants your money, there is a reason for that. Now you can say, yes, I'm poor. Yes, I also need money. I don't feel like giving my money to every person that will knock on my door. Okay, I can understand it. But that, not, that is not the real reason. The real reason is not that you are poor. Because there is a reason to the fact that you are poor. There is a reason why you are poor in your mind. And we need to investigate, to go to the roots, to the source of the reason of all reasons. And like we said, Sometimes it's only because you're a victim. And it's not something that you can really fix. But if you will be honest, when that poor person will come and knock on your door, you will be able or to tell him with a smile, I'm sorry, I'm not able to help you right now. I'm also broke. I'm sorry. And you're going to be so honest and you're not going to hate him. You won't be angry at him.
Because the fact that you're angry at him is not because that he did something wrong, it's because that you're not dealing with your lack of faith. Because if you don't want him to push on those buttons that are waking you up to deal with your lack of confidence in the Creator. Things that are earlier in the chain of reasons of why you are scared today. Things that started long, long time ago and maybe even not in your lifetime. But when you're going to be honest between you to yourself, you're going to find the way how to fix all those generations by not letting them keep on destroying your life today. You will be truthful and then you're going to fix the root of your soul. Means that you're going to fix the early scene of Adam and Eve in heaven. That is the solution. Now, you can be an arm in the holy body of the first man. And he can be a heart and he can be an eye. And that person can be the, the heel. Everyone can be a different organ in that amazing creation of the first man and his wife. Chavai Menu. Great. And there is that righteous man that he is the root of the first man. Shoresh Nishmat Adam Arishon, the righteous man of that generation, the leader of that generation. There is a woman that she is the root of Shoresh Chava Imenu, of Chava, our mother. And that woman, she is the point of truth. And when she going to fix herself, all the worlds will be fixed. When they going to stop blaming like Adam and Eve, that we're blaming each other and blaming the snake and blaming Hashem and there's no end to those blamings just to stop that crazy mess and to take responsibility on what that need to be fixed in your own life. Not to lie, not to cheat, not to do things behind the back, not to be afraid all of the time. Because you're afraid from your own fears. The truth is that you're not afraid from her or from him, from the banker or from that lawyer. There is a way to deal with every problem when the truth is on the table. The fact that you're afraid is because that you don't want to deal with certain things that they are coming and waking up inside of you. With that you don't want to deal. That's what you're afraid of. You're not afraid of that poor person that will knock on your door. You're afraid from that shame that you will feel that you are broke. That you cannot support your family. You don't want to deal with your wife's face with your hungry children, because it wakes up certain emotions, patterns in your heart that are waking up earlier experience, life experience, trauma from your childhood, from your past. So understand, you are a victim. You're not a murderer. You're not a thief. You're not a liar. You fell because of your fear. Because of your lack of ability to deal with the, with the situation that took place in your childhood. And exactly if you're going to check the past, you as Adam and Eve, not able to deal with the fact that the Creator Himself sent the snake. Why? How can we deal with that? Why in the world you did something so horrible to us with your children? For us, it was a betrayal. It was, it was horrific. What have you done? Why you sent him with us? It was supposed to be heaven. You promised to us that you're sending us to heaven. Why do you have someone that's going to try to cheat us, to lie us, to, to pull us in our noses? What's going on, Hashem? Stop. It will never end. You're blaming them and they're blaming you. And he's blaming her and she's blaming him. And it's all lost. It's a complete loss. Adam is blaming Eve. And Eve, she's feeling so betrayed by Adam that he's blaming her. And she's now lost and alone in her life. And everyone are singles and separated. It's a holocaust. And the result is a holocaust of 70 something years ago. That's reality. That's where it took us. That anger and frustration because of our fear from our own fears. But we have a problem. 
What's the problem? There is a verse. The verse is saying, Ashre Adam Pohed Tamid. Blessed and praised is that person that he is afraid always. What? <laughs> I don't want to be scared. I don't want to be afraid. What are you doing to me, Hashem? <laughs> it's a crazy game. I need to be afraid. You want me to suffer? You want me to lose my mind? The worst thing for a person in his life is to be afraid. He's running, terrified, don't know what to do, don't know where to sleep this night, what are you going to do tomorrow? <laughs> That's how people kill themselves, because they're so scared. How can you say that that person that is scared, he's that person that is lucky, that he's praised and blessed? How can you say that? Who is that person that is afraid always? And now that's my explanation. It's that person that is not afraid to look in the eyes of his fears. That he's not scared to be afraid. That he's ready to deal with his fears. And he's able to say, yes, I'm afraid. I don't know what to do. I need help, Hashem. I need you. Where are you? Now that is an honest voice of a scared person that is being brave, admitting in his weaknesses. So he needs to be praised and blessed on his courage, on his inner power, like King David, that is able to express his sorrow and his pain and his anxieties. And his feelings of despair. What I'm going to do? Many enemies you brought up on me. And they're all chasing me. And they want to kill me. They want to destroy me. And one after the other. And that is the truth. I'm scared Hashem. I'm afraid. I'm all alone. I don't have no one to protect me. Only you. You're the only one that can help me. Those are honest prayers. That are making that person to become a holy man. A righteous person, a person of truth, a person that can reveal the mercy and the kindness of the Creator in the world by saying the truth. Because the Creator is close to everyone that will call Him with truth. So as long as you're lying to yourself about who that you are, you're saying, no, I can't give charity, I don't have money, that's not the truth. That's not the truth. The truth is that if you will know now you're poor, but you are poor in a way that if you will go to the grocery store and you're going to feel like buying for yourself something, you will. You do have one penny that you can spare. You do have one dollar that you can give. You do. You, something you can give. You can give a minute. You can give a smile. You can give words of, of, of comfort, you can, you can hug, you can love, you can do something you can do. You can give for advice, you can give an advice, you can give a phone call, something you can give. The truth is that you're not so poor that you cannot give. Your problem is that you don't want to deal with your fears. And the reason that you don't want to deal with your fears is because you are still blaming yourself on your failures instead of understanding that you are a victim. Now, as a victim, it doesn't exempt you from taking responsibility on your life. Okay, so I'm a victim. So now I'm going to drink and I'm going to party and I'm going to do drugs because my fears are because of my parents and my parents is because of the Holocaust and okay, now I can party. No, just don't hate yourself. Now take responsibility and work on yourself. That's what it means to understand that you're a victim. Not to drown in black bitterness and sorrow and sadness and depression. Oh, I'm a victim. Self-mercy, self-pity and, and, and lying to yourself about your ability to climb out from your filth, from your exile. Every class I'm going to take that part out of this table. Every class. And Moti going to put it Every week again. Every week. He's got that crazy desire to put those clips.
When you're going to forgive yourself by that, you're going to open the way for forgiveness. The Creator will be able to forgive you. But as long as you're blaming yourself, the world is stuck. Zero movement, zero development. You must understand reality. Breathe. Breathe. Accept yourself. Accept your weaknesses. Understand that you are a victim. You are part of reality. If now it's night time, it's not because that we sinned. It's because that Hashem turned off the light. You don't need to blame yourself on the fact that you are poor. If there is a creator that is sending money and to you he didn't send enough to make you rich. It's not your fault. Oh, but the Torah is saying, I hear you. But the Torah is saying also many other verses that will contradict that verse. The truth is that there are so many contradictions in the Bible. And they are not real contradictions. Just that every verse is right for a different situation in a different aspect, in a different way. There are two people that are committing the same act, maybe you can call it crime or sin. One will be punished and one will be rewarded because their intention were different. Because the situation in a certain way was opposite in those two scenes, in those two situations. So you need to open your eyes and your heart and to try to relate yourself to reality, to the truth. And like we said before, divrei emet nikarim, words of truth can be recognized. If she's telling you you're lazy, you know if it's the truth or not. Now you can work out of your real understanding. That's what you need to do to take responsibility on her complaint. Okay, she called me lazy. Okay, she said something. Okay, that situation took place in my... Okay, what can I do about it? Sometimes you cannot do much except of apologizing, except of admitting, except of start over and, and trying again and giving yourself another opportunity. That's the only way to fix. And when we're going to do that in our own houses, in front of our own mirrors, in our houses, we're going to harvest huge success. Suddenly your children will become your best friends because you will be able to apologize, to tell him, I'm sorry, I love you. I didn't mean to hurt you. I didn't want to, to curse you. It was not my intention. I love you. I'm apologizing. If your mother, your father, one time will come to you and gonna apologize on everything that happened until today, how huge that moment gonna be for you. So think how huge it is for your child. If you now go to him and tell him, I'm sorry, how huge it's gonna be for you if your father gonna apologize to you and what that he's done. How huge that moment will be. So give that precious moment to your child. And apologize to him. Give that moment to your wife. Give that moment to your husband. Give that moment to your friend. Give that moment to yourself. And forgive yourself. And accept yourself. And start appreciating yourself. When you are checking yourself, and I'm promising that thing to you because I did it. And I saw the, re the results in my, in my life, on my flesh. When you make an honest, sincere investigation about the reasons for your sins, for your failures, in the end of that investigation, you find a lost, confused child that doesn't have a clue how to handle life. That's the beginning. That's how it starts. That you today make mistakes with your children, with your wife, in your business, because 
you never been qualified and guided in the right way. You never been educated properly how to be a husband, how to be a wife, how to be a partner, how to be a roommate, how to be a father, how to be a mother. You don't know. You never had no one to learn from. And that's the reason of all your problems. That you never been taught how to deal with your fears because you saw your father breaking chairs in the house and she saw her father going down to depression and drinking vodka. So, different ways to deal with sorrow, but none of them going to bring you to happiness. So, that child will go an angry person because that's how he saw that you deal with lack of understanding of how to solve life problems. And the other person going to grow with critical domestic depression that in a very young age going to start mm, using drugs and drinking alcohol. And when he's going to be 30, 40, he's going to start taking uh, all kinds of, 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 of medicines and, and, and Xanax and, and whatever. Because he can deal with life. Everything makes him uh, anxious, anxieties. Oh, he's afraid to go out on the house. Why? Nothing happened. Anxieties. Can't talk to people. Can't go to the grocery store. Can't talk. People are, are losing their minds. Okay. Blame yourself on that. Silly. Stupid. For what? How can you? Based on what? You know where it's all started? Go make an honest investigation. It's not your fault. You're just a lost, confused child. Something happened. Someone slapped you. You saw something horrible. Something scared you. Your parents were fighting for you. I remember myself in my childhood. I have crazy emotional moments in my childhood that cannot be healed. Nothing can heal my inner child except of if I'm going to hug him again. If I'm going to tell him, you know what, but I love you anyway. Because he, my, me, that child, my inner child, did everything to make me hate myself. He made everything wrong that he will hate himself. That poor child that was so lost and confused and didn't know how to deal with his fears. That his parents are going to do this, that his brother is going to do that, that the people, that those mm, bullies, go, whatever. And it changed my life. And it changed and destroyed your life. So now how are you going to blame yourself on the fact that you became a liar? Why you be? You are a liar. You're a horrible liar. You're lying all the time to yourself, to your company, everyone. You're okay, great. Why? Why? When it's all started? It started in a certain moment that you could not deal with reality. You were too scared to say the truth. So you lied and it worked. Unfortunately, it worked. So now you found a solution. That's it. A solution for life. It works. I don't need to deal with my fears anymore. I can lie. <laughs> if, I, if, I, if someone catched me, I'm going to lie another lie. And I'm going to make my way out. And that's how you became a liar. So, okay, you don't want to be a liar? Great, work on yourself. But still, remember how it all started. We're talking about a terrified child, four years old, seven years old, that is standing in front of 30 people in the class, and his teacher is blaming him on something, and he now is about to lose his friends. He's about to lose his confidence. He's allowed, about to be punished by his crazy father, depression mother. Okay, what do you want him to do? What is going to do that kid to stop himself from sinning? What do you want from him? How can you blame him? You cannot. Forget about blaming. It's a lie. It's never going to work. He was too terrified. You, me, I was too scared to choose right. I didn't have the vessels. I didn't have the knowledge. I would never in the world dream where that small lie will take me in the future. I didn't know that one sin drags another one, that one lie is rejecting me from the light of the loving kindness of the Creator into a filthy darkness that I had to take so much drugs in my life and to destroy myself and to make tattoos on my flesh. And I didn't know that it's going to take me to those awful places. I was just afraid to admit in front of the teacher because my friends were there. and. 
Reality. Have mercy on yourself. Be realistic. Be truthful. So now you want to work on yourself? Great. First step, forgive yourself. Understand that it's not your fault. Have mercy on yourself. So some compassion on yourself. And when you're going to do that on yourself, by that you're going to open the gate for other people to do the same. You will be able to accept them and you'll give them the ability to accept themselves and to accept others. And that's how the circle is going to expand. And it can happen very fast. Good things can spread like fire in, in thorn fields. Like, like, like crazy fire. It's, it can grow. Very fast those things can happen. We don't know. When Mashiach will come, Mashiach will go and start being positive with people, smiling to people, and one positive person will shine to another one, and suddenly you have communities of good vibes, happy people, smiling to each other, and huge movements are growing in the world, and suddenly, redemption. It's, it's going to happen. Maybe it's already happening. And the reason that you cannot recognize it, it's because that you still have not forgiven yourself. That you still not accept who that you are. So if you're not accepting yourself, you cannot accept him. But when you're going to accept yourself, it will be very easy for you to accept your friend. What's the problem? Oh, he's defected. He is injured. Oh, he is bad. Oh, he's got horrible midot. Why are you saying that on him? Because that's your thoughts about yourself. The truth is that He is just showing you your lackings. He's annoying you because you're still annoyed on yourself to be exactly like Him. And maybe even worse in your eyes. That's why you hate Him. That's why you can't stand Him. That's why you cannot bear His thoughts, His way of thinking. Why? Because He's exactly like you. Because He is pushing those buttons that are waking you up to deal with those fears that you rather to bury deep, 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 deep inside. And never to deal with them because you're afraid of your own fears. You don't hate Him. You hate your fears. You hate yourself. But it's not you to blame. You really have good reasons to be so scared today. Life is not easy. Life were not easy when you were a child. Life was not easy also to your parents that made you a victim in reality. Also you cannot blame them and not your ancestors. Because everyone started somewhere. And like we said, you cannot even blame Adam and Eve because they're going to ask Hashem, why in the world you sent that damn snake with us to heaven? Ribbono Shalom. And no answer going to satisfy you. Not going to satisfy you and not going to satisfy him. There is only one answer. To come back to the source of all things where and when it was all good. That's what we're asking. Chadesh Yamenu Kekedem. Renew our lives to those moments of the early generation, of the first days, the ancient days when it was all really like heaven. We're asking heaven to take place in this world right now. If you believe that there is a creator, you must understand that there is no nature. And if you don't want me to open a new class right now and to talk for another hour and a half, so tell me that you enjoyed my class and that it was amazing and fantastic and I will be able to go back home to my family done in my view and everything will be perfect thank you very much thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Hashem will bless you will heal you will support you will reveal his loving kindness on each and every one of us Amen, Amen. Amen. you're more than welcome and invited to support us and to help our amazing project the Muna Project Inc you can donate online in our website emuna.com and on Facebook, and you can find this on SoundCloud, oh. YouTube, Twitter. What else we have? <laughs> Facebook, wow. live now. <laughs> like us!
<laughs> thank you so Thanks, much. Emuna.com. Yeshakov. Thank you so much. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit emuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.